And I had to step back from it and say, you know what? I need to make it about the people that I'm working with, not about me. And I always seem to gravitate to the ones that need me more than others. And listen to your heart because if you don't listen to your heart, you're going to end up doing something wrong. And we treat each other with dignity and respect, I think. And as fellow humans, do we love each other? We should. Should we be kind and compassionate to each other? Yes. What does being compassionate mean to you? Caring about other people uh, unconditionally. Caring concern for other, other human beings. Just generally being in that person's corner, regardless. Caring, loving, being respectful, responsible. Being loving, being kind to those around you. Just being a friend to somebody, because we all want to feel safe and valued. So what does it look like in action? It looks like someone giving of themselves without any kind of reciprocation, without expecting anything back, just basically doing because it's, it's going to help somebody else. Hard work, dedication, consistency, understanding, listening, and the ability to be there, literally be there. I take time and listen to them. I play games with them. Well, personally to me, um, with what I do, I work with special need kids for Detroit Public Schools. A lot of times the kids already come there and we already know their home situation. And a lot of times they do act out and just just saying, I love you, give me a hug. Because this is what I say to all the kids when they come in the building. I'm like, I love you, give me a hug. And what would you say the most important principles for you are in your role as a caregiver? If they're feeling sad and they're crying and maybe they don't want to be hugged, but they want somebody to just sit there and listen, then you just sit there and listen. You be exactly what they need. Selflessness, uh, caring and concern, zero expectation as far as when you're dealing with a person, uh, a goal may be set, but there's no time limit. I'ma treat them like my mother treated me. I'ma show compassion. I'm not gonna just give up on you because everybody else has given up on you. You got to put on a smile. You got to care about these kids because you might be the only one in life that do care. Make Greg feel safe and loved and always treat him with dignity and respect. If you make them feel that your heart is in it, that you don't really care about that paycheck and that you're not worried about how many hours it takes them to get dressed, then that's going to make them feel this person is really here for me. This person is genuine. This person's not going to hurt me and I can trust this person and I can confide in this person whatever I need. Is there anything we can do to avoid the formation of compassion fatigue in the first place? You know, you're here to help somebody else and you have to take that approach that, you know, move yourself, like I said, step out of your own way and do what it takes to help the other people that you work with. Which is what a lot of people say, okay? They, they say, well, separate yourself from the situation. But the separation creates an us versus them. And that's not something that I find is a positive thing. Um, every morning, I get up and I realize that I'm going to change somebody's day every day. Like, I'm going to make it for the better. Sometimes I have to just take myself away from everything and just be quiet and just think on what I'm supposed to do with my life. How do I want everybody to know how I live my life? I'll sit back, I will read a book, I'll, I'll take deep breaths, count 20, and then I'll go back to do what I have to do. You know, if you feel like to bowl, bowl. If you like to swim, swim. If you like to walk, walk. You have to do something to recharge those batteries. So it's not just making sure you're healthy physically, making sure you're clean. It, it's about inside as well and trying to stay connected with other people who are positive as well. So what encourages you to, to do this work? I get a smile from somebody knowing that I helped them. That's, you know, that's a gratification that I need. I've always wanted to care for people. I have a 17 year old that his mind's a five year old. And he encouraged me to do this work to help others. This is somebody's loved one, 
and, and how can I help them? How can I love them the way that I would have wanted my family loved? I just want people to know that I did care. I did care about my babies, even though they're like 20, 20, 26 years old now. Some of them are older than that now, because I've been doing it a while. I always cared about them, always. Just knowing that I'm gonna change Greg's life for the better every day, and knowing that he's changed mine for the better every day. And what would you tell a brand new caregiver on their first day? So it's not just about caring for the person that you're caring for, also knowing to care for your coworkers. Be patient. Listen, give, give them your full uh, attention, be honest with them of what's going on. Don't make it about you. Understand that what you're doing is very, very important work because you're helping a group of people who really, truly need your help. Be patient. Be very patient. Yeah, be patient and stay calm. And if you need help, ask for help. Yep. Always make a person feel safe, loved, and, tr and treat them with respect because we all want to be treated with respect. And just know that you're changing somebody's life for the better. Take inventory. What is important to you about this job? Is it the paycheck because it's the wrong one? Is it the hours? Because you're in the wrong profession. Is it about making somebody else's life better? You're in the right profession. How do you know when you've had a successful day as a caregiver? All you can do is be kind, caring, considerate toward that person. If I can do all those things in a day and really try to help, then I've had a good day. Sweet dreams. See you tomorrow. That's how you know when you have a good day, when they want you there 24-7. And just to see them just looking at me, you just see that little spark. Or somebody will say my name, and they'll smile going down the hallway, like, here come the salad. And they just, I'll just see them look up at me like that. I want to hear them laughing, hear them smiling, and having an active role in the community. Connecting with other people other than me. And if I can facilitate that, that's great. I get one of those magnificent, wonderful smiles he has. See that, that one right there? <laughs> and he tells me thank you.